implementing list view. Currently we are in section 2 and we are about to check out the 7th video of this section. So in this video we will see how to implement list view in Flutter. So within the same application, let us for a moment assume we have created a fresh application where we are inside our main.dart file, imported our material.dart package and within our main function we have our material app widget which has a title if you want you can change it to exploring list view and in the home let us delete this home class and we will inflate list view in our home property. So down below here let us define a function that creates our list view. Define the variable list view equal to the list view constructor. Now as a parameter you have to define the children of the list view. That is what are the widgets that you want as a list item within this list view. Now the most commonly used widget for a list view is actually the list tile. Where you can define as a first parameter the leading icon. Such as icon of landscape. Now there are various predefined icon that you can use within your application. Such as phone, photo, laptop, landscape and so on and so forth. Whatever icon you want you will get it within your flutter SDK. So right now I will select the landscape icon. And here you can see the preview of your icon. Define the title as a text of landscape. Define the subtitle. Thereafter you can also define the trailing icon. Perfect. Now this trailing and leading are basically the properties that expects a widget. Generally we use icon for them. If you want you can also use any other widget. It is totally up to your choice. But right now I am using the icon for these two. And now in the end of this function let us return the list view. So our method is complete. Where we have the first element within our list view as list style with some properties. Now let us call this function from our main function. So within the home we can define get list view. Now if you try running the application it will actually throw the exception. Just because if you have some scrollable widget that can basically overflow beyond the screen. So in that case you should never use that widget as a direct element of the home property. So what is the possible solution for that? So here instead of using the list view you can use the scaffold widget which we also saw in the first section. And within this you can use the body as the list view. Call this function. Perfect. Launch the application. So there we go we have our list view in front of us which has only one element as list style. Now this list style contains few properties such as this is the leading icon which you can find here. Then we have the title, subtitle and finally in the end we have the trailing icon as well. Perfect. Now all of these properties are basically optional in nature. So let us try adding one more element within our list view. Let us copy it and paste it down below here. And then delete the subtitle and also the trailing icon. Because the properties are basically optional. It totally depends on your requirement. And even if you don't want this leading icon then also you can remove it. Right now let us change its value. And also let us define one more list style. Launch the application. So we have two more elements within our list view. Which you can find here. Windows and phone. Now if you notice within the list view. The property children simply expects the array of widgets. So it is not mandatory to use list style within your list view. Well you can use any of the widget of your own choice. For example along with list style you can use a text widget. Let us call it yet another element. And along with this if you want you can add your fifth element as a container. And assign some height to it. Let us launch the application. So there we go down below we have the text element along with the container element as a fifth element. Now our UI is looking pretty ugly. So let us add a toolbar or the app bar on the top here. So within our scaffold widget let us add our app bar. Launch the application. 
much better. Now if you notice our list items are currently not clickable. So if you tap on these items, nothing happens, no response. So let us try to add the on tap attribute within our first list style. So on click of this item, let us execute an anonymous function that performs some operation. Well right now I will just call the debug print method. Run the application. And now if you tap on this item, the first one, you can notice landscape tab was printed and rest of the item are still not clickable. So if you want, you can add the on tap method for all of these list item present here. It is totally up to your choice. Now what if within our list, we have thousands of element. So for those thousand elements present in your list, it is not possible to add on tap parameter for all of these list item. Well, practically it is not possible. So in short, we can conclude here that the basic list view is just for few list items. Now in case if you want the long list and handle the on tap operation in a generic way, so for that you have to check my next video. Well, in this video we implemented the basic list view which is meant for only small number of list items. Now this basic list view basically loads all the items in the memory when attached to the screen. So here we can say that never use basic list view for the larger number of items since it is not memory efficient which can affect your application performance. Now always wrap the list view as the home of the scaffold widget because your list view is actually scrollable in nature and there might be chance that it may overflow beyond the screen. Thus your application will throw the exception in the runtime. So in the next video, we will find a solution of how to implement the long list in a generic way.